Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here of the C47 and another episode of Gearbox 2.0. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about all of these Canon zoom lenses, so let's get started. Let's get down to business because I'm only in the barn for a couple more days before I head back on the road and we're gonna be talking about these four lenses. Now here's the deal. I create a lot of educational content and even though I have used many different camera systems to do that, the ones that I use the most are Canon Cinema EOS products. Usually in the past, I have had certain types of zoom lenses on these cameras for most of the productions that I've been doing. The one that comes into play probably more than any is the 24 to 105, which is sort of ubiquitous to a lot of Canon cameras as the kind of default kit lens. It is an F4 all the way through, well, kind of, because I think if you've used the lens, you'll know that when you start to get to the long end of the lens, there is a little bit of fall off there, but it is a constant aperture lens. It is a lens that has good autofocus, and it also has something that's very, very important, which is image stabilization. So whether you're on sticks or you are handheld or you are on a shoulder mount, it is really a great lens overall in terms of giving you a nice focal range, and the image is pretty good. Okay, second lens. This is the second zoom lens that I purchased, and it is a 24 to 70. This is the version one of the 24 to 70 from Canon. And the big advantage to this lens is it gives you an extra stop. You do not have that image stabilization on this particular lens, but you get that extra stop. And from my viewpoint, in terms of using this lens over the years, I'm losing that extra 35 millimeters in terms of my field of view from that 70 to 105, and I'm losing that image stabilization. And quite honestly, when compared to some of the modern lenses that are out there, this lens is not the sharpest lens in the world. Stop it down into that sweet spot, it's gonna be pretty sharp, but it's still eh, meh, as they like to say. Okay, this lens, is, in my opinion, a very special lens. This is the 24 to 70 version two. And this particular lens has been the go-to lens that we have been using when creating content for educational videos for quite some time. I've used it both with the C300 Mark II and the C200 a lot, and I really, really like this lens. But, and there is a but, this lens, as I said, does not have image stabilization. So when you're starting to get into handheld, shoulder mounted kind of rig, it is losing out a little bit in terms of that. Sharp as a tack, absolutely love this lens, but I want to try something else. Well, there is something else, and it costs less, and it is the relatively new 24 to 70 F4 lens from Canon. It has, of course, AF, it has image stabilization, it's very lightweight, it doesn't have that extra range that the 24 to 105 has, but what I wanna find out is how sharp is this lens. So this is not gonna be completely scientific, but what I wanna to do today is I want to, and by the way, there's a 24 to 105 on that A camera right now. What I wanna do is I wanna swap the lenses out in this configuration at 70 millimeters for the tightest shot from where that camera is, and let you take a look at that footage. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to take a look at all of these lenses set to an F4, even if they are faster than that, which these two are right here, and we are gonna set them also to a 70 millimeter focal length. We're gonna start with the 24 to 105 F4 lens. We're gonna move on to the 24 to 70 version one, 24 to 70 version two, my current favorite, and then we're also gonna be taking a look at this relatively new, not brand new, 24 to 70 F4 lens, which of course has the IS. These two have IS, these two don't. I'm trying to find a lens that I can use both in the studio and also out there. This is my first test with it, so let's go ahead and dip to black and take a look at this 24 to 105. 
First out of the gate is the 24 to 105 f4 constant aperture lens, and we have it set to an f4.0 and a focal length of 70 millimeters. This is the workhorse kit lens from Canon that so many of us have used on our camera systems, whether they be Canon or otherwise. And love the lens overall. Uh, don't like that light fall off when we get to the long end of it, but it has that image stabilization, which accounts for a lot. Maybe not the sharpest lens in the world, but it has done well on a lot of my productions, but it has not been retired, but is not generally the A camera lens now when I am doing this type of production. And now we're taking a look at that same lens at 200% dropped into that 1080 timeline so you can take a look at what it looks like over here, which is very telling in terms of what we're getting from the lens. And now we're taking a look at the 24 to 70 version one lens. It doesn't get a lot of rotation in my kit anymore because I'm either using that 24 to 105 with the image stabilization, or I am going out and getting that 24 to 70 version two because I found that for the type of stuff that I'm doing when I'm using that type of lens, that I like what I'm getting out of that much more. Now we're taking a look at that 24 to 70 version one at 200% in the timeline. And again, it's the first time I'm taking a look at this lens in a long time in terms of the image that it produces. Now this is a 24 to 70 version two, which I am very partial to in terms of a lens. And one of the things that you may notice immediately when we cut to this lens is the difference in terms of light transmission. We are still at an f4.0 here. We are still at a 70 millimeter focal length, but the light transmission is considerably different with this particular lens than it is with the other three lenses that we're taking a look at. And here we are taking a look at it at 200% in a 1080 timeline, because again, this footage was shot in UHD 4K. And it's really interesting to see how different this lens is from the other lenses in the series. And lastly, we're taking a look at the 24 to 70 F4 constant aperture lens that has IS. We have it set to an F4 in terms of aperture and also to a 70 millimeter focal length like all of the other lenses. It's the one that I have the least experience with, but I'm really interested to see how it compares to version two of the F2.8 24 to 70 millimeter lens, because I'd like to be able to use this in lots of different production environments, especially because of that image stabilization, which I become reliant upon in a lens like the 24 to 105. And here we are taking a look at this lens at a 200 millimeter focal length. So you can check that out punched in on a 1080 timeline because again, we shot this in UHD 4K. And I do wanna just mention one other thing about this lens that might be worth checking out. It has its own dedicated macro feature and it is very, very cool. There you have it. Those are the four lenses we're taking a look at today, and they are lenses that many of you may be using inside of your productions. We're only seeing three here because I left that 24 to 70 F4 constant aperture IS lens on that C200. I have no idea how I'm going to feel about this. I have not done this before in this environment in terms of seeing this back to back to make a decision. And I'm really hoping because that lens right there is so cost effective that it holds up well, hopefully closely to that 24 to 70 version two lens that I am so fond and dear of, but we will see. In fact, right now in the lower thirds area, you're getting some of my opinions about how I feel about these lenses. I will say that I love that macro feature on that 24 to 70 F4 lens, and I think that's super cool but we have to choose the right lenses for our jobs. All of these lenses, except for the 24 to 105, of course, have the same focal length range, but you will see in that footage that there are some differences in terms of light transmission and probably the sharpness in terms of what we are seeing in those images. Okay, let's wrap this up. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the C47 YouTube channel so that we can continue to create free educational content for you. Check out the links below the fold, and I'll see you guys next time on Gearbox.